G'day, Quill. Hey, Duncan. How are you today? Oh, I think I'm pretty well. I'm ready for another episode of Physics Swiss. How about you? Me too. I feel like it's been ages since the last one. Too long, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, in the interests of you know excitement, yeah, let's just jump right into it, let's shall we? Get into it. Beautiful. Now, you being you, you brought some classic biological stories. I did because you're a you're a big hippie. I am a big hippie. Yeah. Uh, I'm all about the environment, yep. and I'm all about. Biology, and Mm -hmm. we're about trying to save this awesome planet that we live on. Because it's pretty good. It's the only one we got. It's the only one we got. It's the only one we got. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like it. So, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about some really cool research that some um, scientists have been doing, and this is about the Barrier Reef. Ooh. So, the Barrier Reef is about 2,300 kilometers long, which is massive. How many football fields is that? I don't know. Oh, my. You're the one that thinks of things in football fields. Yep. Um, But it's very, very big, and we know that it's very, very important. It's World Heritage listed, um, and it's really, really important, and it's, it's like, it's massive, and it's so important for all our ecosystems and the biodiversity of our animals and all this kind of stuff. So the problem is that something is killing our barrier reef. Yes, indeed it is. We've actually talked about this before on the pod. We I have. Might, I might interject. Mm-hmm. Um, because you remember there was a massive amount of funding that was being directed yes. to the Great Barrier Reef Foundation, yeah. whatever it's called. I is do. that what it's called? I think something like I that. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And people aren't too happy about that, actually. We, we were like, oh, it's great news. But then yeah. it turns out that potentially it's... Maybe it wasn't the best people to give the money to. Because there's 11 people that work for that. Yeah, work so it's great that the money's getting funded towards saving the reef. Um, it's just maybe not maybe the best people yeah. to, to, to have given it to just because they're not a very big company and they're not very well... Um, kind of renowned for drilling, doing good work. Yeah, and they haven't got like much that. resources. But we but don't want to get into the politics into of it. So let's talk a little bit about something new that's been happening. Mm-hmm. And this is, well, this isn't new, but what's happening is we've got these crown of thorn starfish. Mm-hmm. And these are killing our reefs. So they're terrible. They're terrible. I've never liked the crown of thorn no, starfish. No, not the crown of thorn. If, so, as soon as I heard the name, I thought, not for me. No, no. they're no good. So what these starfish do is they eat coral in massive amounts. Mm-hmm. So they're just chowing down on that coral and they're really destroying our reefs. They're not leaving any for the rest of us. That's right. So these are actually a pest, okay? So what we want to do is to try and eradicate a bit of this pest. We want to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, so what – it's actually quite hard to get in there. It's a lot of space to try and – to kind of, kind of tr- control. How many kilometres so was it? 2,300-ish. My God, that's 25,000 football fields. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> Good Googling. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So some Queensland researchers have actually made a little tiny world first robot that can inject the starfish with a lethal injection. So it's gonna kill these starfish. My god. Now obviously we don't want to just be throwing around random lethal injections everywhere. No. That would be dangerous. So this injection what they actually give them is only dangerous to the starfish. So it's specific, only dangerous for that specific starfish. Wow. Um, so how does they, that, yeah. How does that work? Well, sometimes they will do it on different. I'm not sure 100% on how this one particularly works, but often what you can do is you can target it towards certain um, maybe proteins or certain mm-hmm. kinds of DNA structures or anything like that that is only within the starfish. So obviously we know that starfish are going to have very specific Things just like we can target um, kind of drugs for different diseases for our bodies. True. You can target something that's lethal specifically for that kind of starfish. Right. Yeah. So what they're going to do, though, is we've got to get it into that starfish. Yeah. And we can't just have kids in, you know, wandering around picking up starfish, popping them in buckets. No, exactly. And also that's... you can't be just throwing out toxins into the, into the ocean no, and hoping exactly that it right. lands on... It needs to be injected into the starfish as yeah. well. So what they've actually done is they built this little kind of robot. It's about the size of a vacuum cleaner. And it can travel underwater and it actually has artificial intelligence. So it goes down there and it can scan and it can actually just find these starfish in particular. And when it finds them, it then uses its artificial intelligence. It's got 99.4% accuracy to actually give these starfish an injection of that toxic substance and kill them off. That's pretty high. Yeah. Now, these crown of thorn starfish... They are hideous looking, aren't they? They are. You can tell that they're nasty. They're. Like that's the one, that's one of the sort of most amazing things about nature is that if something is nasty, yeah. it will tell you. It's like it a will weird let you know. Alien 
starfish. It's not like a pretty colourful one that you see yeah. in the drop pools. It's not, it's not the one that you see in Finding Nemo, who's like no. always saying hello to itself. Um, these, these things, <laughs> oh, yeah. they're kind of like a poisonous underwater echidna. Yeah. Like those, those, That's those, a very good analogy. Thank like you so much. Um, they are hideous. And they're also like orange and red coloured. Which in nature basically means... Danger. Stay away. Yeah. yeah, I'll mess you up. That's right. Nature's very good at yeah. telling us that these things are kind of very dangerous. So, yeah, so the Australian um, uh, Australian Institute of Marine Science um, has recently been taking part in some trials with this, what's called the Ranger Bot. Ranger Bot. Ranger Bot on the Great Barrier Reef. So, hopefully, that will mm. start to um, do some really good things. Yeah, because the crown thorn starfish destroyed like 40%. Yeah. It's, brutal. Great Barrier Reef, which it's a horrible is, little thing. That's uh, my hot take. That's yeah. too much. Too much. That is far any, too any much. Any is too much. Yeah, so exactly. this was actually, this has kind of been done in collaboration with the Queensland University of Technology. Mm-hmm. Um, QUT. Google. Oh. Yeah. Because you've got Big to think names. that's a lot of, you've got a lot of um, technology. Space, going on, yeah. yeah, a lot of technology. And also the Great Barrier Reef Foundation. So they're all helping together Barry. to do this work, which is really great. Okay, cool. Well, cool. all of a sudden I like the Great Barrier Reef Foundation again. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. cool. Well, that's good news, and I hope it works. Yeah. Ninety-nine point four percent is quite high. Yes. Now, I have yes. another story for you. Okay. And it's kind of following on from our starfish you story. You piqued my interest. Yes. Go because on. Because I know how much you love my environmental impact and biology stories. This I do one actually. is. I know. I know. I'm only staring. Um, so this one is really cool. They've just found a new huge coral reef off the coast of America. Oh, coral reef. Coral reef. But I thought we had the coral reef. Well, we have a coral reef. Uh-huh. We have the biggest coral reef. We do. But there are coral reefs all over the world. Yep. Um, and it's really important because we actually thought we knew where most of these already were. Yeah. And what's so important about finding these new ones is we're locating them in different places. So this must be... Under the sea, really far. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's, it's under the sea, and it's in an area where they didn't think coral reefs were likely to, um, oh, okay. to to be. So they probably weren't even looking there. No, that's right. So what we're doing is we found this new one, and this one's. I mean, it's not as big as the Great Barrier Reef. It's about two hundred and sixty kilometers, which is how many football fields? Mm, sorry, how many what? How many football fields? Oh, it's like twenty two. Let me just do the numbers in my head. It's two thousand eight hundred and forty three point three nine. You did not do that in your head. Yes, I did. <laughs> All right. So it looks like this reef has been growing there for pretty much as long as the humans, modern humans, have been around. Yep. Um, so it's very old, and we've just kind of missed it in all our adventures and going around. So well, we've had slightly more exciting coral reefs to look at, haven't we, well, here in Australia? Yeah, maybe. But what's really important is we're forgetting how important reefs are for our ecology and for our ecosystems and all this kind of stuff. Mm. So there's, like, recycling of nutrients, um, maintenance of all the different kinds of... Um, genetic diversity so all different species and all this is actually really important um for lots of downstream effects so you might not even realize how important just a little coral can be then for a little fish and then that little fish for a big fish mm. and then all this can like lead on to big problems if, if you know if you get rid of these things so it's a new one in a mm. place we never realized and what's so important about this is this is an area where the american government has been wanting to drill for oil ah uh. So now they're finding out that this important reef is there and that really what they need to be doing is is doing more exploration to check for this kind of stuff. Okay. Where they really ideally wouldn't be drilling for oil anywhere in the ocean, mm. but um, if they do, they need to be more kind of more careful to make sure it's not in a place with all this really great diversity and all these yeah. beautiful reefs. Because the biological impact of drilling in there would be massive. I mean, exactly. you think about the, the coral reefs sort of operate as a, a home base for so many different species. They do. Right? So if you take that away, it's kind of like just destroying a whole town. Exactly. Or a city, but in terms of animals. Exactly. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty interesting and it's uh, definitely a good a good reminder for us to make sure that we remember how important these things are and that just because we've been somewhere before doesn't mean you're actually looking at everything that's there. So apparently boats have been going over this area for 600 years or so. Yeah. But no one's ever noticed this amazing reef underneath. So Wow. So it must be really, really far. Is it far down? I'm actually not sure how far down it is. 
Maybe future Duncan. It's on the ocean floor, it says, but the thing that is can the be ocean different floor. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, but the ocean floor just off the beach is about 30 centimetres yeah, down. Yeah, precisely. It can be uh, very, very, very deep. I'll also. tell you what, I'll get future Duncan on the case okay. and he will find out just how far down this particular uh, reef is. So, future Duncan, how far down is it? Uh, it's about 800 metres or nine football fields. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. That's so, pretty yeah. far. Yeah. Or, oh, it's not oh, as far as I thought. Far. <laughs> cool. <laughs> now, that's my um, environmental oh. and biological stuff yeah. we talked about for today. That's so, so you that you would talk about those things, Quill, isn't it? I feel like you, the only thing to follow you're just is. a broken record, aren't you, this, at this point? There's only one thing that can happen whilst, once I've done that. What's that? You've got to talk about space. Yeah, so I've got a story about the International <laughs> Space Station. <laughs> Um, this one's actually, oh, it's pretty crazy, to be honest. It is mm-hmm. pretty crazy. I mean, everything that happens in space is crazy, isn't it? Fundamentally. Space Sorry. crazy. Space crazy. Um, space crazy. So this one is Lack nuts. of oxygen. What? Lack Going of oxygen crazy. makes yeah. people crazy. Hypoxia. So, no, this is really, this is really crazy. Okay. International Space Station mm-hmm. has a leak. <gasps> <gasps> exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, you should gasp. Yeah. Because what happens if the... You're inside of a box in space, right? There's a huge pressure differential, which means you've got high pressure yep. inside, you've got no pressure or a vacuum outside, exactly. and you might crush everyone inside the space station. Well, not so much that. It's going to go the other way, actually. It's the it's other way. It's high or low pressure. Exactly. Yes. So, you're in a box. There's air inside of your box. There's no air outside. Can you breathe mm-hmm. in space? No. No. So, <gasps> you're going to hold all of that pressure, as we mm. know, is going to rush to where there is that's less right. pressure. So, the other way around. Exactly. And um, that means, you know, it's leaking air. It's sprung oh, a leak. Dear. Yeah, exactly. And so, basically, one morning, uh, just the other day, NASA was sort of monitoring the system. There's lots yeah. and lots of sensors on side yeah, of the International of Space Station. And they looking at the pressure and they were like, hold on, it's going down. Okay. That's that is um not ideal. No. So they went, okay, this is this is really weird. But they were looking at the, the rate of decrease and they mm-hmm. went, look, it's not that bad. You but know, it is going not, yeah. it is going down. It's mm-hmm. not something that we actually need to freak out about. Yeah. So they discovered it while the astronauts were all asleep. Okay. So thought, just for our up. listeners that maybe aren't so familiar with air pressure, mm. if you think about a balloon when you first blow it up, right? Yeah. Really chock a block. It's, it's it's filled with pressure. It's a high pressure balloon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you think about a balloon, like a month later, mm-hmm. it's kind of all saggy and baggy, and it doesn't have as much air inside of it. Yeah. So you have a high pressure balloon when it's full. It's basically putting a lot of air in that space. And then the less air you've got inside of it, the less pressure. So you call it a low pressure. You call it low pressure. And in space, we have no air at all. So yep. it's it's basically it's a vacuum. But you could say really really low pressure. And versus the pressure that's inside of the space station. So air would want to go from inside the space station to, to outside. outside of it. Yeah. So it's kind of like when you blow up a balloon and then pinch the end of it and yeah. it goes... Let it go. It's because like it wants that. to move back out. Yeah, exactly. precisely. Yeah, so they, you know, they thought, okay, it's leaking, but they figured out it's not that bad. So they didn't even bother waking them up. Um, <laughs> but then they woke up and they were like, hey, guys, um, we just realized that there's a leak. You know, you're losing air. You're losing pressure. Not ideal. Not ideal, like I said. Um, And so they had to go on a little bit of a quest to find out where the leak was coming from. And they figured (laughs) out, because obviously it's the International Space Station. Did they say how how they did this test? How they, like, you know what? Walking around listening for a whooshing noise of air going <laughs> yeah. outside. Shh. Or like when you get your bike tire and you bubble it through water. Totally. Or yeah, they just put the International Space Station yeah, in a just pool. look for where the bubble comes <laughs> from. There it is. Um, no. They, they didn't actually do that. Okay. They probably, I imagine what they do. And, you know, future Duncan will probably come in and correct mm. this because he's very good. He's a very knowledgeable mm-hmm. person, unlike mm-hmm. present Duncan. Very good on the Google. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, don't reveal his secrets. Um... What they probably would have done is they would have sealed off the different compartments. Yes. Yeah. And then gone, okay. Kind of narrowed it down. And narrow it down, exactly. Certain yeah. area. Yep, yep, that's exactly what they did. Yeah. Uh, and they eventually discovered that it was inside of the Russian segment okay. because it is the International Space Station. So right? they have little sections where all the different countries live? Not where they live per se, but it's like the Russians might say, hey, we want to do X, Y, and Z yeah. um, while we're on the space station. So they bring all the things that they would need. Oh, and they keep it in that little yeah, area. Yeah. So yeah, it's like this enough. one of the name that they give it is like the Soyuz capsule. Okay. Uh, and there's, there's lots of others like capsules and module, mo- modules yeah. and that sort of stuff. Cool. So great news at the end of this was that they actually did end up fixing it. You want to yeah. know how they fixed it? 
Some high tech gadget. Sticky tape. <laughs> How good is that? Of course. Yeah. It's called Capton tape. Okay. Which apparently has actually been actually been used in space travel since the 1960s, mm. which is basically since when space travel has been around. So some fancy tape. Well, yeah. And they haven't developed anything new that's better than this tape in. Uh, well, it works. In like 40 they years. Literally just fixed like the International years. Space Station with tape. That's some good tape. That's good stuff. Why, get why in my car. You... <laughs> exactly. Holding that thing together. Oh, well, um, that's awesome. Yeah, so they fixed it. So How I guess. How big was this hole? Like two millimeters wide. Oh, so, so like a pinprick kind of thing. Like a pinprick kind of thing. But yeah. obviously that's still a big issue when you're in space. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So all that, hair, all, all that hair, all that air is going yeah. and leaking out. I imagine that's the, no- the noise that it would have I made. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll find out what's going to happen, how they're going to, you know, patch it slightly more reliably than yeah. just putting some tape on it <laughs> um, in the future. But... Yeah, crazy. That's, That's pretty that amazing. Could... So, I mean, the th- there's theories about how it happened. One of the theories is that it's space debris. Space junk. Space junk, which we've talked about before. We, I, so, I am obsessed with space junk. <laughs> do you remember we talked about there was a space debris laser? Yes. That we talked about? Remember we talked about that? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. There was an episode. Fill me in. <laughs> there was an episode that we talked about where... We talked about how that you could put a laser either in space or on the ground somewhere and it would, you know, fire photons mm. at space debris and it would push it off course oh, so that it didn't cool. hit satellites. And this is precisely, this is why we need that yeah. sort of thing. So I don't know if it could happen. have hit something that's only two millimetres wide yeah. from 400 kilometres <laughs> yeah. away. Sharp shooter. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, but... You know, sometime in the future, maybe that would be possible, and then we don't have holes in the space station. That would be good. That would be great. Yeah. So I'm really glad that that had a happy ending. Yeah, me too. All right. Do you know what that means it's time for? What's that, Quill? (gasps) Fact of the week. I've got a really good one. Go. It's amazing. Are yep. you ready for They're this? They're always amazing. That's I why know. it's the fact of the week. But they're super amazing. All right, hit me. Yep. Go Are you ready it. for this? Are you sitting down? Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay. A pumpkin is actually a fruit. No, it's not. It is. So a pumpkin is a fruit? No. Quill, this is a terrible do, fact of the do week. You is, know, do you want to know what else is, is a fruit? fake news of the week. Okay, here, here's my list of... Vegetables, okay. we think of vegetables. I know that the tomato is a fruit. Yeah. Everyone knows that one. Yeah. The tomato is a fruit. Do you know what else is a fruit? What? Capsicum? No, it's not. Yes, they yeah. are. Cucumbers? Shut the front door. <laughs> Peas? <laughs> no. Beans? What are you talking about? Eggplants? Beans aren't fruit. They're Olives? Beans. Avocados? No. Corn? Zucchini? This is, this is my That's list. wild. So all of these things that we think are vegetables are actually fruits. That's... No, you are... It's fake news. Fake news. <laughs> it's not fake I'm telling news. you right now. Now, the difference is because of the way their seeds are, okay? So what happens is when we have a vegetable and we have a fruit, the way we class these, we like to class things as scientists, yeah. um, is whether their seeds are a reproductive part of the plant. So I, I, I knew this. You, you I actually did this? know this, okay. yeah. So all of these random kind of vegetably fruits are actually fruits. Because they have seeds in them. But they wouldn't be delicious in a fruit salad with ice cream or something. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, But did you know what else? What? Bananas are not a fruit. Are they a vegetable? No. What? That's the two types of things. Are they an animal? No. (laughs) And they're not a robot. They're a herb. A herb. Bananas like, are a herb. Like oregano. Yeah. Or basil. <laughs> basil. So bananas are a herb. Sage, rosemary, and thyme. Herbs. Well, and yes. And bananas. Lots of herbs. Um, herbs are plants that have no woody tissue. So bananas, have you ever seen a banana tree? The way that their uh, stumps, even though they're not technically trees, yeah. uh, the way that their stem things kind of grow, that's yep. not actually contain any wood. It's more like if you thought it was like a giant coriander stem. Wow. Like a giant parsley stem. Cool. And it's got bananas on the end. You know what? I don't think I've actually ever seen a banana tree. Really? Yeah, I don't think so. What? Yeah. That's outrageous. Is that outrageous? I grew up on the North Coast. Yeah. So seen, we had one in our time, backyard. Growing everywhere. <laughs> I had a um a grapefruit tree in my backyard. I've never seen a grapefruit. <gasps> You've I never have, seen it. 
Anyway, that's that's absolutely wild. The the bananas are actually a herb thing. That's really spinning. Wait, I got one more. Oh my god! No, are you ready? This. Yep. Cauliflower and broccoli. What do you think they actually are? They're trees. No, <laughs> yeah, they are. And Everyone not, knows a broccoli. They're not trees. a dog. <laughs> they're actually flowers. I believe that. Yeah. I think I, I yeah. Very I, delicious I buy that one. and nutritious flowers. I buy that one. Yeah. Do you yeah. like broccoli? I love broccoli. Do you like uh, what are those? What's that disgusting vegetable? No vegetables are disgusting. They're all nutritious and delicious. But you're thinking of Brussels sprouts. I am thinking of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> thank you. Because have you noticed that broccoli and Brussels sprouts taste the same? Yes, they're very similar they're... in the terms of the families that they grow. Really? In. Does that mean Brussels sprouts are also flowers? I'm not sure. I think they are because they taste so similar. Let me find out. Okay. No, let's have Future Duncan find out. Future okay. Duncan? Yep. Is Brussels sprouts also a flower? No, but they belong to the same family that includes cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and kale. Oh, there you go. Well, there you go. Yep. All right. Neat. Okay, Duncan. So, I think that, that's... Uh... That is wild. Thank you for bringing me those many, many facts. Yeah. Fake news. Feel free to make some kind of fruit, vegetable, herbish that salad. That really would be the worst salad. Mm. Of all time, wouldn't it? Well, it just actually sounds like a, a salad rather than a fruit salad. Here's an alternative um, fact of the week for you, just very quickly at the end. Bananas, as we know them now, are basically... They're basically GMOs. Yeah, which means genetically modified, modified organisms. Organism. Yeah. Exactly. Because you know how like they're sort of long, slender, beautiful yellow colour mm-hmm. and a little bit curved? Yeah. Real bananas, quote-unquote real bananas, don't look like that at no. all. They look mm-hmm. like these fat, brown yucky yeah sort of balls of weird yeah in stuff. fact a lot of people think that genetically modified organisms only have to be things where you're taking like a gene from a salmon and sticking it into a tomato so that's mm. frost resistant but a lot of it can also be breeding things for particular exactly. traits i.e bananas that are straighter and longer yeah. or uh, other things that can be pest resistant and stuff yeah. like that so a lot of it actually is very very beneficial mm. um, people just get a bit caught up in not understanding yeah. the basis of these um, it's called artificial selection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's cool. I be- they basically went, oh, look, there's a banana there. I think we could make it better. Yeah. So they picked the best ones. Do you know I have another banana fact? What's that? Did you know you're actually supposed to open them from the other end? Yeah, I did know that. That blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. Not so, the bit with the long bit on not it. Not the bit with the handle, which I always think was the handle, so you yeah. can hold it and pull it's it It's kind down. of like the tab of a you're can. You're supposed to hold the long bit yeah. and pull the other bit down. Now, what you do is you pinch it. You, you pinch it and then it just splits open. That's, well, I just... I that's, how, um, that's how monkeys do it. I know. And I haven't been able to move on from holding it the other way. I've known that for a long time. Has that made me change no. the way I eat bananas? Absolutely not. No. 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 Yeah. Well, there you go. Some How's extra that facts on for way? the week. That's bonus facts <laughs> for you guys God, out we there. We should have saved all those facts. Could have been a banana Seriously. episode. That would have taken us up to episode 50. <laughs> Okay, that's it for Physics Twist. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Quill. And um, don't forget, check out the Physics Ed podcast with Ben Newsom. Our lovely boss. Very nice man. And, um, yeah, that's it. So we'll catch you next week. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.